The immune system is a very complex network of cells and compounds that work together as a team to maintain the integrity of our bodies, so defend against a lot of different uh, pathogens or toxins or cancer, and also to safeguard the uh, body and tissues. So when something is uh, defective in quantities or in function, uh, the immune system cannot work properly to defend us ag against all these threats. Uh, primary immune deficiency are genetic uh, defects of the any components of the immune system, while secondary immune deficiency uh, are caused by external causes uh, to the immune system. Um, in the case of secondary immune deficiency uh, patients, um, they, they had previously uh, a healthy immune system. So they can uh, restore their immune systems after the, the um, disease is cured or treated. Most of the secondary immune deficiencies that we see, which are secondary to hematological malignancy or secondary to treatments of auto-inflammatory or autoimmune diseases, uh, uh, behaves more than uh, antibody deficiency. So they show very similar patterns of infections, mainly respiratory infections, but there is a proportion of, of, of secondary immune deficiency patients that behave more than a combined primary immune deficiency and they, they are susceptible to high-risk infections or life-threatening infections. Yeah, sometimes it's very tricky to differentiate uh, a, a, an underlying primary immune deficiency in a patient with secondary immune deficiency, which may be mainly a proportion of patients with hematological malignancy, for instance, or a proportion of patients with complex autoimmune uh, diseases, uh, uh, particularly in children. So um, we have to do a special uh, deep uh, immunophenotyping or genetic studies would be essential. So uh, early testing will give you some important information about separating out the degree of immune deficiency that exists before you've started the treatment for the malignancy and that will potentially give you clues about whether that could be primary but of course one has to bear in mind that the malignancies are in and of themselves immunosuppressive uh, and that the malignancy, even without a primary immunodeficiency, can cause immunodeficiency. So that's a real challenge for clinicians, is trying to unravel accurately uh, the diagnosis when someone has had treatment for a pre-existing malignancy. Um, in an ideal situation, one might be able to test before the malignancy is treated with drugs, so that one can understand uh, what the level of immunodeficiency is before drugs have had an effect. That will tell you whether uh, the malignancy itself, the disease, be it multiple myeloma, CLL, NHL, is causing a disease-related immunodeficiency. And of course, drugs can further uh, increase the immunodeficiency. Having said that, I think the fundamental challenge sometimes is when you do not have that information and when you are trying to understand if in fact the malignancy is a malignancy that is associated with an underlying primary immune deficiency. And in that case one can look for clues and some of these are quite straightforward and they might involve taking a detailed family history. 
they might involve understanding that in fact infections had been a predominant feature for much longer than the time of the diagnosis of the malignancy. And you might also see things like a more profound antibody deficiency, fully absent IgA. You might see abnormalities in B-cell phenotyping. And so all of these kind of clues, there may have been uh, some of these inflammatory or autoimmune features that occur before the malignancy and sometimes by many years, such as ITP or cytopenias or GLILD, lung inflammation. And so if those features are there that are not normally part of that particular malignancy, it makes you prick up your ears and look much more carefully as to whether um, there is something that one can discover, perhaps even with genetics, to explain the primary or understand the primary immune deficiency. Mi nombre es, me llamo Juanma, eh, tengo 56 años, estoy casado, tengo dos, dos niños, eh, soy fisioterapeuta y tengo una vida la verdad es que me cuido bastante, intento cuidarme bastante, cuido mi dieta, hago ejercicio, eh, trabajo, tengo relaciones sociales, una vida prácticamente normal. Eh, la verdad es que eh, no tenía demasiados síntomas. Eh, alrededor del año, en torno al año 2014, en unas eh, analíticas, unas pruebas médicas que me hacen en el trabajo, vieron que tenía un problema sanguíneo, de unas anomalías en, en, en los test, en las analíticas, y a partir de ahí, bueno, pues empezaron a hacer una investigación y, y concluyeron que tenía una inmunodeficiencia variable común. Eh, puede ser, eh, yo antes sí que tenía eh, con bastante frecuencia, pues faringitis, problema de sinusitis, eh, aftas en la boca, y poco a poco intenté modificar mi estilo de vida y eso fue mejorando y fue disminuyendo. Pero aún así de vez en cuando me ocurría, tenía estos problemas. No, en principio no he tenido ninguna consecuencia. De hecho, la suerte que tuve es que al hacerme este diagnóstico de, de la inmunodeficiencia variable, al hacerme los siguientes pruebas, diagnosticaron una leucemia crónica. Es una vida muy similar a la que yo tenía antes. Eh, la verdad es que con este diagnóstico pues sí que intento cuidarme más. He mejorado la dieta, el ejercicio, mis relaciones. Después del tratamiento para la leucemia crónica, eh, tengo un tratamiento cada cuatro o cinco semanas de eh, inmunoglobulinas. Correct diagnosis of immunodeficiency disorders, for that matter for any disease, is important because if you delay the diagnosis, the complications would be that many more and the results of treatment would be less appropriate. So early and correct diagnosis of these disorders is of paramount importance and delays in therapy can not only result in increased morbidity, but also in mortality. There are several challenges that we have experienced. The most important is lack of awareness. Lack of awareness amongst the doctors, lack of awareness amongst the uh, lay people. And doctors working in low and middle income countries are so used to treating infections that many times uh, their entire focus is on treating a given episode of infection and uh, we often forget that what underlies that infection and sometimes you forget that uh, there may be an underlying immune defect. So lack of awareness is one of the most important challenges that we have experienced. After that it is lack of facilities for diagnosis, lack of appropriate laboratory support and lack of treatment facilities. So it's a difficult problem, but the, the good thing is that as the awareness increases, uh, the, uh, these centers uh, have started building up their laboratories and the treatment also uh, improves uh, in these countries. 
I'm Vivian from Bolivia. I'm 42 years old. Uh, I'm married with a great man. We have two daughters, Maria Pia and Ana Lucia. Uh, I'm a full-time mom. I love to enjoy it with my family and friends a lot. I love traveling, shopping and reading and I'm the president of the prim primary immunodeficiency organization, FIDEP Bolivia. Uh, well, I was diagnosed with uh, CVID when I was 16 years old. Um, the first symptoms I had were many uh, infections, respiratory infections, fever, uh, I have uh, herpes virus and many stomach infections as well. Before the diagnosis, it was um, hard because I always had fever, infections. Uh, it was really difficult for me. I couldn't have a normal life. And after the diagnosis uh, and with the treatment, my life changed a lot. Uh, I feel, I can say that now, I feel good. I try to have a normal life. And especially because I have two daughters, and I, what, I want to teach them, like my ma mother told me, that um, life continues and even if you have something bad in your life, you, you have to see the uh, positive side, always. I receive uh, intravenous 40 gr uh, grams every month. And I feel, I feel very well when I receive. Uh, sometimes before I got uh, treat the immunoglobulin therapy, uh, I feel like, tired because I, I think it's like uh, my gasolina. <laughs> yeah, I feel good. I feel uh, very well with the treatment because without the treatment, without the uh, diagnosis, uh, I was always ill, always sick with many infections, fever, that's not the life. <laughs> um, so immunoglobulin uh, essentially means the same as antibodies and uh, there are proteins in the blood uh, that defend against infection and there are three main classes called IgG, IgA and IgM and patients that are deficient in those um, can have replacement. Replacement contains only IgG which is uh, usually only IgG, which is the main uh, immunoglobulin or antibody in blood. So you're replacing the most important one. Uh, and that can be done uh, by a number of routes, uh, intravenously or subcutaneously. And that's expanded uh, recently to try to optimize uh, the route and the dose and the cycle for the individual patient. In India, availability of immunoglobulin is not an issue but access to immunoglobulin uh, can be an issue. Health in our country is a state subject. So it varies from state to state. But the good thing is that several states now provide free access to immunoglobulins for their patients with primary immune deficiency. So this is something which is uh, very positive. There are other states which have started providing uh, Im access to immunoglobulins uh, but still uh, they, they, we still need to work with them so that all patients in these areas get free immunoglobulin uh, therapy. However, there are several countries in this region where immunoglobulins are still not easily available. So we have to work with these companies, we have to work with the governments in these countries and try and assure them that this therapy is cost effective and that it improves the quality of life of these patients and these patients need treatment and there is no way you know, we can avoid treatment of these patients. So there is wide disparity in this region uh, as far as access to immunoglobulins is concerned. Uh, I think the more important thing is to have an early diagnosis. And, and treatment and then you can have a good quality of life if you have those things.